Why, that's not a football, but my shadow I see. It's six more weeks of winter. It must be. That was the scene yesterday morning in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where the world's most famous groundhog saw his shadow, predicting six more weeks of winter. Thousands of people came to watch Phil and the dignitaries wearing their top hats up there in Gobbler's Knob. Check out that guy there, literally wearing a hat of groundhogs. It's a scene straight out of the movie, The Groundhog Day, where Bill Murray lives the same day over and over and over again, waking up every morning to Sonny and Cher. And Fox News sure got into that Groundhog Day and that Groundhog Day spirit yesterday, asking President Obama the same things they talk about all the time. I want to get some things on the record. So let's begin with health care. Yeah. Did he tell you, Secretary Panetta, it was a terrorist attack? You know what he told me was that there was an attack on our compound. He didn't tell, he didn't use the word terror? I got to get to the IRS because yeah. I don't know what happened there. And I'm hoping maybe you can tell us. Health care, Benghazi and the IRS. For critics on the right, these are scandals that just never end. This is not about health care. It's not about insuring the uninsured. It is about the total control of a free people under the guise of health care. A major scandal is developing in the wake of last week's assault on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi. We are witnessing a widespread cover-up based on flat-out lies. This is the way totalitarian states are created. This is it. And as much as you want to say, oh, well, that's hogwash, well, what were they doing with the IRS? It's the same old story on a loop. But here's the truth. The health care law had problems, but it's working. There was no cover-up on the attack in Benghazi, and there was no conspiracy for the IRS to target conservatives. So why are some Republicans so obsessed about all of them? President Obama has a theory. These kinds of things keep on surfacing in part because you and your TV station will promote them. That's a line I don't think they'll want to repeat. Joining me now are Dana Milbank and James Peterson. Thank you both for being here. Hi, Reverend. Thanks, Rev. Dana, the president tried to pop the right-wing bubble live on national TV. How are the Republicans responding tonight? Oh, they won't respond well to that uh, uh, because he was there uh, tweaking the guy who has been uh, delivering these things uh, night after night to him. It, you know, they, they do keep repeating these same issues uh, uh, week after week, year after year. But what seems to be changing is uh, the anger and intensity with which they do this. And uh, this is the third time uh, O'Reilly sat down with the president, by far the roughest and uh, nastiest exchange. I did some counting there. He interrupted the president 42 times. Uh, in 10 minutes and 42 Act, times Bill O'Reilly in interrupted in, the president in 10 minutes and of all the words uttered in the in this 10 minute interview 40 percent of them were uttered by O'Reilly so it was more that O'Reilly was hosting Obama on on the O'Reilly factors it felt more like that than an interview of the president <laughs> wow mm -hmm. uh, you know James the right wing media totally mm -hmm. uh, uh, have been going after these things but it's not just them uh, here's Senator James uh, in Hall, responding today uh, to the president saying Benghazi was investigated. Listen to the senator. It's just an outrageous lie, uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to call it anything else. I will say this to my dying day. I know people don't realize it now, but that's going to go down in history as the greatest cover-up. And I'm talking about uh, compared to the Pentagon Papers, Iran-Contra, Watergate, and the rest of them. This was a cover-up in order for people right before the election to think that there was no longer a problem with terrorism in the Middle East. I mean, this was the senator today. Now, now that definitely was security failures, but a worse cover-up than Watergate and Iran-Contra? I mean, what is he talking yes. about, Professor Peterson? 
He's speaking in pure hyperbole there. I mean, you know, for all of these so-called scandals, they've been debunked multiple times. Yes, Benghazi was tragic, and there were some security and communicative failings prior to it, but there was no cover-up. There have been many, many hearings on it, much exposure about it, much talk about it, and to call it a scandal is much ado about nothing. Same thing with the IRS scandal. People need to understand this. There is no scandal there. The same people that are being accused of using key words to try to find conservative groups were using key words to try to find liberal and progressive groups, and it was the liberal and progressive groups that ended up getting yeah. denied status. No conservative groups were denied status. The thing about this that's different from the movie, though, Reverend Al, is that in the movie, eventually Bill Murray realizes that he's got to make some changes so he doesn't get caught in the same loop of ignorance of his life. The Republicans are not following that script so well right now. Now, now, you know, uh, Dana, Bill O'Reilly also uh, asked the president <laughs> about visits the IRS commissioner made to the White House. Listen to this. Douglas Shulman, former IRS chief, he was cleared into the White House 157 times, more than any of your cabinet members, more than any other IRS guy in the history by far. Okay, why was Douglas Shulman here 157 times? Why? Mr. Shulman, as the head of the IRS, is constantly coming in because at the time, we were trying to set up the uh, uh, healthcare.gov. Now, first of all, 76% of the meetings the IRS commissioner was cleared to attend at the White House involved the health care law. And it's only confirmed that he signed in for 11 events. I mean, doesn't that poke some kind of hole in the theory that he was there all the time plotting against conservatives? I mean, Dana... Are we really to believe that the president of the United States himself would be sitting plotting against right wing groups <laughs> with the head of the IRS? I mean, what hmm. are we talking about? Yeah, this came up a, a year ago in the, in the middle of all this, and it was answered uh, at the time. Of course, when you say something, it didn't mean he's here at the White House, as O'Reilly said. It meant what he said in the first instance, that he was cleared in, and you are automatically cleared in, right. and the guy in his position for all these meetings that he didn't actually attend. Uh, but the whole thing doesn't matter anyway, because everybody's uh, 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 been through this in all kinds of, uh, uh, of independent ways, uh, and have found, as the professor was just saying, that it was... Uh, 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 that the targeting that was done here was done uh, uh, to groups of, of all pro political persuasions. Uh, likewise with uh, uh, Benghazi, the whole notion of a cover-up doesn't make a whole lot of sense since, uh, as the president said today, they were acknowledging that a day after that it was a uh, terrorist attack. Uh, uh, and uh, it, so it's not clear. When you allege a cover-up, there has to be some information that was hidden, but it seems <laughs> all to have been out there within, uh, within a few days. Now, let me brace something else here, uh, James. You know, a tweet from Hillary Clinton got a lot of attention last night. The tweet mm -hmm. said, and I'm quoting, it's so much more fun to watch Fox when it's someone else being blitzed and sacked. Super Bowl. Now, Hillary Clinton did do an interview with uh, Bill O'Reilly in the 2008 campaign. Has the network gotten more partisan since then? Is that what her tweet uh, indicates? Well, Fox has been fairly partisan all along. I think that our political discourse has gotten a little bit more toxic, and, and Fox sort of has been a part of that process. And so I think she's she's kind of commenting on that. Also, I, I think that there are other questions here. I mean, you know, she's also arguing that the president is, is tackling and getting physically involved as well. So his pushback uh, is important. And some of his strategies on, like, not taking the bait on the question that Bill O'Reilly asked from the from the viewer, from the letter about, about transforming the country, he, he did something smart in the interview, pushed back a little bit. But I think for, for Secretary Clinton, it's good for her to not be on the hot seat in terms of some of these fake scandals with respect to the Republican Party. Oh, wow. See, that's why I love to have you on, Dana and James, because I thought she was talking about the Broncos. <laughs> Dana Milbank and James Peterson, thank you both for your time. Thanks, Reverend. Thank Still you, Reverend ahead, Sharpton. Paul Ryan takes a detour from reality and claims President Obama's, quote, lawless with his angle, we'll talk about it next. The GOP lawmaker who threatened to throw a reporter off the balcony gets the full treatment from Saturday Night Live. The congresswoman is not interested in answering to these new damning accusations. You've been thrown out a window, bro? Because you know what? When I do it, I don't open it first. Yeah, you go down with the glass. You get that? 
I was just trying to...